Hi. Hey, what's happening? Um, I was like, oh, crap, I think I have the wrong title up. I don't. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, <laughs> it's been a very long night. You look like you got caught doing something. That's why. You're like, what? what I know. That's <laughs> because I was, I was like, did you just take a drink or something? What's happening? I mean, listen, I wish I, I wish, but I'm so poor. I can't even afford alcohol anymore. So I haven't drank in the last like month and a half of episodes. Mm-hmm. All right, go on. Just so. Realize. With my lies. Um, uh, no, I thought I had the wrong title up for the episode, which, guys, is our snack size episode. It is my turn this week. Yay. Um, I'm excited about this one. This one, though, I did I did allude last week that it's going to be kind of um, heavily technical, um, but only the first half. So, essentially... Um, I'm going to be talking to all of you fine people, uh, well, mainly Laura, um, about the gateway experience. Have you ever heard of it? No, I don't think so. It is a report that the CIA wrote in 1983. So my sources are um, iflscience.com, an article by Tom Hale, harpersbazaar.com, whoopmylife.org and um, a medium.com article by Tobias Van Schneider. So, yeah. Um, So let's just get right into it. So back in 1983, the CIA wrote an obscure report looking into what's called the gateway experience, claiming that an altered state of human consciousness may be able to transcend space and time. Now, decades on, the document has since been declassified. Uh, It was declassified in 2003. You can find the full 29-page report on the internet at the CIA's website. Um, And it's now experiencing a resurgence on social media, which is how I found out about it. Because you know me and the TikTok. Mm -hmm. So I do. So it's thought that the report was part of the CIA's wider investigation into whether concepts of mind control and hypnosis could be used in the espionage efforts of the Cold War. So it essentially boils down to the CIA investigating the idea of inducing a profound out-of-body experience um, that could possibly tune into some kind of higher realm beyond reality. So... I figured since you, this was a perfect topic for the podcast, since it does kind of fall under the paranormal umbrella. We're always talking about meditation. We were talking, we talk about lucid dreaming. We talk about astral projection, things like that. So I was like, all right, this sounds pretty cool. And then I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I think I'm here for this. Um, So fundamentally, the gateway experience is a training system designed to bring enhanced strength, focus and coherence to the amplitude and frequency of brainwave output between the left and the right hemispheres. So, um, uh, so as to kind of alter consciousness, uh, moving it outside the physical sphere. Did I just, I really emphasized Mm -hmm. sphere. Wow. Yay. I can say my S's, um, moving it outside the physical sphere. So as to ultimately, escape even the restrictions of time and space is essentially what this report proposes. This is what the experiments were trying to do. Okay. Now the technique was called the gateway process and it's based on ideas developed by the Monroe Institute, which is still around today. I found his website. You can check it out um, by the Monroe Institute, which is a nonprofit organization that's focused on the exploration of human consciousness. Now, the theory is that certain exercises can allow the brain to hemisync where brain waves in the right and left hemispheres can synchronize at the same frequency and amplitude. Um, So hemisync, the report states, can be achieved through a series of meditation-like exercises while listening to a set bunch of sound waves known as the gateway tapes. And I'm like, this is basically like what everybody is kind of doing in metaphysics today. I'm, I'm well, like, everybody is super into like, even on YouTube now, you can find like those 
frequency like things. Uh huh. I go to bed to them not, every but, night. Yeah, like people every night. say that you know it's really helpful to study to them, go to sleep to them, whatever. <laughs> the, the certain um, frequencies. frequencies of sounds. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's something that Aaron Bush. Um, taught me about when she and I did our Reiki session. She has it playing in the background. Um, this certain, like, this, I think it's 432 megahertz. She has playing in the background for her clients. And it just really kind of, there's something about it. The different frequencies, there's 588 and there's, you know, there's 912 and there's a bunch of different ones. But mm -hmm. 432 is kind of where um, she works at. And kind of what I found is like best to focus my attention on a specific thing so Your adhd responds to the 432 to the 432 yeah yeah it really does um so <laughs> i yeah but this is exactly that essentially um okay. so the report um states that the universe is a complex system of interacting energy fields which we already know um and it states that um there are certain states of simple vibration in energy which again not as of right now 2023 this now this is not new information but in 83 apparently it was groundbreaking um human consciousness is actually no different it's just a vibrational pattern of energy <laughs> and humphrey is he, fucking here for this he found his vibration he found <laughs> And apparently it's not vibing with whatever, whoever else is in that room. <laughs> so human consciousness is no different. It's just a vibrational pattern of energy. Once hemisync is achieved, the report stated, it can trigger an altered state of consciousness in which the vibration of a person's consciousness is free from physical reality and tunes into this pure energy field. So it draws a lot on ideas of quantum entanglement. Um, the report claims that it may be possible for human consciousness to profoundly alter the universe since reality is a holographic projection. Um, it basically, the part encodes the whole. So in this understanding of reality, everything is deeply connected um, in a matrix of interconnected energy vibrations from your consciousness to the depths of the universe. Now, I'm getting way above my educational and mental pay grade in a lot of this. You should, it mentioned quantum entanglement, and I was like, uh-oh, how am I going to tell this and sound like I know what I'm talking about? So the report goes on to, say, to state, quote, this consciousness participates in the all-knowing infinite continuum of consciousness, which is a characteristic of energy in the ever-present. Consequently, it is accurate um, to observe that when a person experiences the out-of-body state, he is, in fact, projecting that eternal spark of consciousness and memory, which constitutes the ultimate source of his identity, to let it play in and learn from dimensions both inside and outside the time-space world, in which his physical component currently enjoys a short period of reality I did yes <laughs> did that make any sense to you like because I, I'm reading it for like the 900th time I'm like that actually makes sense right so kind of like a an astral projection the consciousness then we are all part of the consciousness and then energy is always present so we're always present so we can be wherever or whatever Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So probably right now, Humphrey is barking at a dog in like 900 other universes. He's probably barking at a leaf. But well, whatever. yeah, but maybe that leaf <laughs> is in like Earth 14 or something. You don't know. Um, <laughs> you don't know how wise and calm and chi that dog is. Yeah, he seems it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe not here, but anyway. So some readers of the report have dug into this idea deeper and have taken it as proof of the law of attraction, right? Like attracts like. You put out negative vibes, you're going to get negative vibes back, good vibes back. Good, it, it, And that's certainly something that 
it's a, a way of life that I live. Um, I believe it's a way of life that you live. Like it's basically treat people how you want to be treated kind of, but a little bit more intense. So the philosophy Mm -hmm. of the law of attraction is that positive thoughts bring positive results into a person's life, while negative thoughts bring negative outcomes. It's also known as lucky girl syndrome. You know, we've all known that one girl that like everything goes right for her. She gets all the jobs she applies for. She gets into all the colleges that she applied for. She won $5,000 on a scratcher, all green lights on the way to work. She's going golfing at the end of the day. Like... She's just like, there's nothing that ever goes wrong in this woman's life. And so a lot of people refer to that as lucky girl syndrome. So what to make of all of this, right? There, many of the, of the ideas in the report are drawn from real scientific research. Uh-oh, how'd what happen? Hello? Uh-oh, you can't hear me? What the fuck? That's a shame. I'm going to pause because she has to be able to hear me. Everybody does. <laughs> she can't hear me at all. Hello? Can you hear me? No? We'll be right back. <laughs> no. All right, Laura's back. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as she started talking about lucky girl syndrome, my whole system was like, Mm-mm, not us. <laughs> We're done. We're out of here. Break, this, break, break. This does not pertain to us. <laughs> right? We still saw you. Like, you weren't, we heard you. We could still see you. You weren't frozen. Nothing was going on. And I was like, oh, my God, Laura has to listen to me. I <laughs> You have to feed into my ego and my story. Okay, so lucky girl syndrome. Um, Okay, so uh, all right, listen, guys, I have to repeat this because she didn't hear it, but it's her fault. And if you're hearing it again, I'm really sorry. Um, (laughs) So what to make of all of this? Many of the ideas in the report are drawn drawn from real scientific research. Okay, Um, but when pieced all together, they aren't testable. So that kind of, you know, is a problem for hard science. (laughs) There's also a lot of questionable theories and leaps of logic chunked, nope, chucked into the mix, (laughs) Um, at least according to this article's author, which was um, Tom Hale. This was the IFL science article. So Mm -hmm. now, however... All that being said, um, if you are a regular scroller on social media, like I am, um, I'm the problem, it's me, hi. Uh, Chances are you might have seen videos of young women confidently proclaiming how lucky they are. I just talked about them. Laura didn't hear it, whatever. Um, (laughs) That everything goes right for them. Lucky girl syndrome is the latest trend doing rounds online with the concept being that if you repeatedly tell the universe how fortunate you are, um, you will be rewarded with that promotion, proposal, pay raise, depending on what you're wishing for. Um, Laura and I are here to tell you that's not actually how it works. Um, because man, did we hunt for that job for a long time. (laughs) So for every video that you have of somebody excitedly sharing evidence that it works, you have one criticizing the movement, claiming that it's nothing more than toxic positivity. I don't necessarily know. I don't necessarily agree with that either. So what exactly is lucky girl syndrome? Depending on who you ask, it's either an empowering practice that can see you fulfill your dreams by repeating daily affirmations, such as everything works out well for me, Um, or it's a non-inclusive, toxic social media trend of rich white girls not checking their own privilege, which was in Harper's Bazaar, and I was like, I love that, so could be that too. What do you think? Honestly, I think it is... There's scientific evidence that backs up that if you um, practice gratitude, you feel better. So, yes. And I, that goes for anybody. Um, if you, yeah, like, you know, I'm happy that I'm okay. I'm happy that I'm healthy. I'm happy, you know, whatever it is, you know, um, that you will literally find that your life seems better and you know, more positive. Right. So, I mean, it really could just be as simple as that. It could be. It could be. And you're actually onto something with where I'm going with this. So, 
Lucky girl syndrome is essentially manifesting that is focused on luck. Our brains are naturally weighted towards negativity. Um, at least that's what this Harper's Bazaar article said. Um, that's how we're wired, and it's been that way since the dawn of time. Maybe Where's I don't know. Brain? Yeah, um, our brains. Right. And our brains haven't evolved that much. <laughs> That's comforting. Uh, so anything that challenges that negativity bias can actually be really helpful. So there is a New York Times bestselling author and motivational speaker named Mel Robbins. And I love her. I follow her on TikTok. You guys should follow her too. She is really, really amazing. I recently posted something on um, Facebook about... Um, it's one of her TikToks um, about the let them be theory, the let them theory, where if people don't, if your friends go out to lunch, and they don't invite you, let them. If you get laid off from, if you're one of many layoffs at a job, let them. We spend so much time, our time, energy, and emotion worrying about things that are beyond our control that it, it tends to really like drag us down. So this, just she talks about this whole let them theory. That's a separate topic from this, but the article referenced her. So anyway, this Mel Robbins has a great metaphor that the author of the article found useful. She says, our mindset is like a pair of sunglasses. It's how we see the world. And how we see the world is going to have a big impact on how we behave and therefore the, the uh, actions that we take. Now, I think you and I have talked about the RAS and it's that little area in your brain. It's called the reticular activating system. And I think you and I have talked about it either at the Ohio State Reformatory um, at our booth. We were chatting about it or it was like a phone conversation. But all of this being said, there is an actual physiological reaction that happens when you manifest whatever it is you want. And it's called the reticular activating system or RAS. Now this system is a bundle of nerves in our brainstem that filters out unnecessary information so the important stuff gets through. It's an actual thing we've all got. So our brains are incredibly complex. I mean, some less than others, and I've dated about half of those people. But we can sift through billions of bits of data at any given time and somehow we don't short circuit, short circuit because we are being inundated with so much data in all of our waking life that our brain, there's no way our brains could possibly process and do something with every single piece of information. So that's where this reticular activating system steps in and helps out with that. So the RAS is the reason you learn a new word and then start hearing it everywhere. Uh, it's why you can tune out a crowd full of talking people at, say, a concert or wherever, big movie theater, Taylor Swift, whatever it is for you, yet immediately snap to attention when someone says your name or when something or says something that at least sounds like your name. So when I bought my car, I have an orange car. And when I bought it, they were like, well, what color do you want? Here's all the color choices. And I was like, you know what? I want orange because nobody has an orange car. You never see an orange car. It's bold. It's bright. It's unique. It's perfectly me. I will stand out in my orange car. I love my orange car. About six hours into driving my orange car, I started seeing orange cars everywhere. I was like, what the hell? Everybody... What is with all the orange cars? I have the only orange car. One or two, sure. I saw like six or seven the day I bought the car. I'd never seen an orange car before. But what was going on was I actually had seen an orange car before, but my I didn't tell my brain how important an orange car was to me. So it was ignoring all, the, all that crap. Mm -hmm. We see so many different colors of cars. The minute I bought my orange car, I love my orange car. I must have said orange car to you guys at least 900 times already. My brain was like, oh, you like orange cars. Well, then what we're going to do is we're going to show you that. That's important to you. So we're going to make sure that orange cars now catch your attention. That's the RAS. Yeah. And we have talked about this before. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, I think that's with anything, though. And that's how the gratitude thing works, right? Right, exactly. If you see positive mm -hmm. things, then all of a sudden you're going to notice, oh, positive, positive, positive. 
Right, exactly, exactly. So your RES takes what you focus on and it creates a filter for it. It then sifts through the data that you're constantly receiving throughout your waking day, and it presents only the pieces that you have told it are important to you. So all of this happens without you noticing, of course. Um, The RIS programs itself to work in your favor without you actively doing anything. Um, In the same way, the RIS seeks information that validates your beliefs. So it filters the world through the parameters that you give it. And your beliefs shape those parameters, right? Mm. So if you think you're bad at giving speeches, you probably will be. If you believe you work efficiently, you most likely do. The RAS helps you see what you want to see and in doing so influences your actions. Now, some people can, some people suggest that you could train your RAS by taking your subconscious thoughts and marrying them to your conscious thoughts. Did you just throw your glasses in the trash? No, I just set them down. <laughs> oh, I was like, I, what the hell? I, was, I had to like adjust. Nope. It sounded like you hucked them in a metal trash can. <laughs> So it, some people suggest that you can train your eyes by taking your subconscious thoughts and marrying them, marrying them to your conscious thoughts, which is not too far off from what that CIA report was suggesting, kind of right. doing that little hemi-sync thing. Mm-hmm. They call it setting your intent or setting your intention. If you are big with Reiki, things like that, we say that a lot. When we, those of us studying and living in a, me- a metaphysical life, we always say setting, talk about setting our intention. So this basically means that if you focus hard on your goals, your RAS will reveal the people, information, and opportunities that help you achieve them. Um, So it's not really about being lucky. It's just about having the drive to know what you want, really, is kind of what it boils down to. But there is more to it. So if you care about positivity, for example, you will become more aware of and seek positivity. If you really want a pet turtle and set your intention on getting a pet turtle, you'll tune into the right information that helps you do that. When you look at it this way, the law of attraction doesn't actually seem so mystical. Focus on bad things and you will invite negativity into your life. Focus on good things and they will come to you because your brain is seeking them out. It's not magic. It's your reticular activating system influencing the world you see around you. So many people find this method the most practical. First, think of a goal or a situation that you want to influence. Now think about the experience or result you want to reach in regards to that goal or situation. Then create a mental movie of how you picture that goal or situation ideally turning out in the future. Notice the sounds, the conversations, the visuals, and the details of that mental movie. Replay it often in your head. I've heard of vision boards, right? Vision board that shit. Do it. So, of course, in reality, these things aren't as easy to do as they sound. um, But I do believe that our RAS, our reticular activating system, can be trained. And it's about visualizing what we want and then letting our subconscious and conscious work together to make it happen. The idea is, if I can hear my own name in a crowd of thousands, can I also tune my brain to focus and attract the things that matter to me? I'm fairly certain that I can. Now, so this is why I wake up every single morning, Laura, and I thank God for my blessings. I ask for clarity of mind to see the lessons put in front of me, and I state my plan and intentions for the day. So you have to continually refocus and remind your brain what matters and what doesn't. And it's hard. It it. It's hard to do that on a consistent daily basis. Sometimes you just have a bad day and that leads into a bad night. You have fitful sleep. You wake up and you're still exhausted. You remember the bad day. You wake up and the very first thing is today's going to suck. This is grumpy. Blah, blah, blah. I'm hot. I look stupid in all my clothes. And then the day just kind of goes to shit from there because your brain is like, oh, okay. So we're looking at the bad stuff today. Great. Okay. And so it just kind of filters out the stuff that... You typically tend to enjoy, but you're in that bad mood where, you know, you've got that little cloud, that little pencil cloud above you kind of a thing. So it is, you do have to continually refocus and remind your brain what matters and what doesn't. Um, If we set our intent and refocus, um, though, um, like our RAS you know, may help us out. Our brains look out for our best interests. Our RAS is filtering through billions and billions of pieces of data so that we can see and hear and be what we want to be. Um, 
Now, I will say that lucky girl syndrome ignores the fact that life is not fair. And the, just by you saying, I want a cherry red BMW over and over and over again, that your RAS isn't going to be like, okay, well, you'll find it in your driveway tomorrow. That's not how it works. So this lucky girl syndrome thing and like this RAS, it ignores the fact that life is not fair. It's not fair. And we know that it ignores the fact that some people are more privileged than others. And it doesn't take into account the the systemic and, and structural biases and inequalities that exist in the world. So it also doesn't allow for negative emotions or feelings, which are part of life. Trying to ignore negative feelings isn't very self-compassionate. We all have them and it's okay to have them. Um, So while it might seem to work in the short term, those feelings are going to come back and bite us in the long term if we ignore them. So lucky girl syndrome has a lot in common with toxic positivity, like I mentioned a minute ago. If you try it and it doesn't work for you, it could be yet another stick to beat yourself with, which is not fair. Um, If you already feel vulnerable or wobbly, this could be something else that makes you feel bad about yourself. So this article said, the, art, the author of the article said, quote, where I would point instead, um, where I would point people instead, rather, is an approach that has 20 years of scientific study behind it. And it's called WOOP, W-O-O-P, which stands for Wish, Outcome, Obstacle, and Plan. It's a similar strategy that you can use to fulfill your wishes, but it also takes into account the things that can get in the way of our dreams. It's a more realistic approach. So it's the brainchild of German academic Gabrielle Odegen. I'm probably saying that completely wrong. I think I might have said that in a Dutch accent. Watch all the Dutch were like, no, you didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she studied positive thinking and found that we get much better results if we anticipate what might go wrong. Now, that's not being a negative, Nelly. That's not, you know, but it is a responsible way to kind of approach stuff. The WHOOP approach encourages you to dream big. Think hard about what you want, what the outcome of that would be, but also to think about what might get in the way and then plan accordingly. A lot of her clients find it really useful and you can find out more about it at whoopmylife.org. So that's what I have on the Gateway Experience and how that kind of evolved into all of this. I think the RAS is fascinating and I'm constantly trying to train my brain to just be a little bit even kinder to myself in this time where my life has been in an upheaval for almost a year now and it makes it makes it really hard to try to have hope and carry on and continue and do things day after day after day after day when all I want is my old fucking life back you know what I mean and that life is gone so um I'm working really hard. I wake up and I make sure the first things I do every day is be grateful for my child is healthy and alive. My friends are amazing. My mother is healthy and alive. Like my blessings for my inner circle and then expand outward. My dogs are happy and healthy and spoiled freaking rotten. We still have a home over our head. You know what I mean? Like every single day so that I don't get... I don't turn into a bitter person simply because my life looks a lot different than it used to. And I'm not you then. And I don't, not that I don't like it, but that I just, I keep, it was easier when I had my old life. This new life right now is temporary. I know, but very hard. So I make sure that every single morning, the first thing, not, Oh my God, it's the alarm is going off again. I make sure I've trained myself and really worked hard. So the very first thought in my head every day is I'm grateful that my family is still with me and go on from there. So that's what I've got. Namaste. (laughs) What do you think? (laughs) So what do you think? Um, I think it's very you know, practical for a lot of people. It's something a lot of, it's something very like popular right now as far mm-hmm. as like, people getting into uh, mindfulness and all of that. So it's very, for sure. You know, yeah. On point for, I think so. People these days. Yeah. 
Yeah. Give it a try, guys. Um, you can certainly look up all of this online. Uh, the CIA report. It's 29 pages. It's really wordy. I did not read it. Uh, I started to and then I was like, no, no. Um, there's got to be an article that summarizes all of this. And there was. Uh, then you can also check out just Google the reticular activating system. Um, it is not made up. I swear to God, we actually have it. It's this right in our brainstem. Everyone's got it. Look it up. Look into it and maybe check out whoopmylife.org because you know what? That sounds kind of like the best of both worlds. Dream big. Dream as big as you absolutely want to, but things are going to get in the way. So let's maybe try to think about what those things might be, how we would overcome them or sidestep them, and then continue to move forward toward the dreams that we have. So that's what I got this week. That's my, awesome. it's not really a weird story, but kind of. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit. It's very metaphysical. Um, you're up next week with your short story. Um, so we will see you next week with Laura's. And then um, I'm excited for my next one, which we're actually recording right after this one because Laura's going on vacation. So we're doubling up on recordings. So she's actually going to hear my next one. Uh, right now, and um, she's going to keep it a secret for two weeks. Maybe. Maybe. I can be bribed. Fucking whore. Don't bribe her. It's really good. All right. Bye, guys. We'll see you uh, next week with Laura's story, which is not going to be as good as my next one. I mean, maybe it will. All right. Bye. We love you. Bye.